Greetings and welcome back to Room 303 AP English, our Roberts Lectures. And we now turn to Sir Patrick Spens, uh, one of the most popular of the child ballads, number 58, uh, round 41. This is of Scottish origin, and I'm with you on page 649 of your, of your Roberts text. We have a maritime ballad, of course, about a disaster at sea that we'll be uh, working with. By the way, this one was first published in 11 stanzas in 1765. And while the version that you'll be working with me now, of, uh, in terms of our listening, I'm going to have a, a, a Scottish uh, reader re read this for us. There are a few lines that are, will not be a part of your Roberts text, but I want you to get a real feel for how this works. Let's listen to it. Let's work level one, our summarizing, and then we'll go to level uh, two and three. All right? So here we go. Sir Patrick Spens. Sir Patrick Spens. The king sits in Dunfermline town, drinking the blood red wine. Oh, where will I get a skillful skipper to sail this ship of mine? Up and spake an elder knight, sat at the king's right knee. Sir Patrick Spens is the best sailor that ever sailed the sea. The king has written a broad letter and sealed it with his hand, and sent it to Sir Patrick Spens, was walking on the strand. To Norway, to Norway, to Norway o'er the foam, the king's own daughter of Norway, tis thou must bring her home. The first line that Sir Patrick read, a loud, loud laugh, laughed he. The next line that Sir Patrick read, the tear blinded his ee. Oh, who is this has done this deed, this ill deed unto me, to send me out this time of the year to sail upon the sea? Make haste, make haste, my merry men all, our good ship sails the morn. Oh, say not so, my master dear, for I fear a deadly storm. I saw the new moon lit yestereen with the old moon in her arm. And if we go to sea, master, I fear we'll come to harm. They had not sailed a league, a league, a league, but barely three. When the sky grew dark, the wind blew loud and angry grew the sea. The anchor broke, the topmast split, t'was such a deadly storm, the waves came over the broken ship, till all her sides were torn. Oh, long, long may the ladies sit, with their fans into their hand, or ere they see Sir Patrick Spence come sailing to the strand. Oh, long, long may the maidens stand with their gold combs in their hair before they'll see their own dear loves come home to greet them there. Half o'er, half o'er to Abadar, tis fifty fathoms deep, and there lies good Sir Patrick Spence with the Scots lords at his feet. All right, let's, uh, let's just think a second here. Let's start at 2B for this one. This is what we call, again, a narrative ballad. Now, a ballad, of course, and you could hear it almost like a song of a kind, no question, right? And, of course, narrative, and then we have a story here. Let's just, at level one, let's just summarize. Three-part story. One, the king, who sits, of course, on his throne and has all power, we immediately think of Machiavelli's Prince here, don't we, and discussions in our conversations with uh, Plato's Republic, says, I need the best to sail across the sea, going in, in, and bringing back a, a woman, etc., etc. Somebody says to him, Sir Patrick Spence is the best sailor. Part two, Sir Patrick Spence will get the letter that will tell him what is, is his duty as soon as we hear that, we think about Beowulf and, of course, his duty and the idea of duty in the Anglo-Saxon code. We think about Immanuel Kant and the notion of duty as it relates specifically, of course, to the categorical imperative and all of that. Spence, though, will, the moment he reads it, he, of course, is upset because he knows this time of the year, the weather is bad, he may not come back, and yet a man's got to do what a man's got to do. We think about, of course, in the Iliad and Hector, who has to have that famous moment with his wife, right, where he says to her, I've got to go out and I've got to fight and I've got to do what a man's got to do. Of course, the potentiality that he doesn't come back is really, really high. 
finally part three of the, of the poem is the end, the tragic end, of course, that storm which will take him down and Sir Patrick Spence will not be returning uh, back. And of course, along with the other men who go with them, they're, they're uh, women with the gold combs in their hair are waiting. We've had some foreshadowing that things were not going to go well, and sure enough, they don't go well. Notice the word choice even at the very beginning of the poem, the blood red wine that the king is, of course, drinking. At 2A, uh, uh, of course, we've got that, uh, a number of messages. One obvious message is that life is hard, and often we are put in situations where we have to make decisions not totally our own. We're told to do something, we have to do them, and sometimes it doesn't work out so well for us, right? Of course, courage is a big part of the message of this poem as well, so we can put that one down. At 2B, we've mentioned already, obviously, the ballad, as well as some powerful word choice, as well as notice the rhythms that are quite beautiful, and a good reader, as we were just listening to, who lets us, of course, appreciate it even more. Three, at level 3A, how can I relate to other texts? We've mentioned so many, obviously, Beowulf comes to mind. I also want to point out the poems of Burns, so we have at LearnStrong.net, we have some uh, other poems by um, Scottish writers, especially Burns, you can go and take a look at, especially to a mouse and to a louse. Finally, at 3B, how can I relate this information to uh, myself personally? What was a time when you were kind of in a similar circumstance, where you were asked to do something, you had a feeling that it probably would not turn out well for you, and yet, because you were asked to do it, you elected to go ahead and do it. A student once reporting, I know exactly about this because the coach came to me and said, I need you to serve as team captain. And I knew, the student says, I knew the minute I said yes. I was going to have a real difficult time because so many on the team were my friends. As a, as a captain, I was going to have to do some things and support the coach in ways that would make me unpopular. I knew it was going to end up probably rough for me, and I did it anyway because that's what I was asked to do, that sense of, of duty. What was the time in your life where that happened for you? Well, there you go, an introduction to Sir Patrick Spence. Thank you.